here we have a cylindrical tank that's on its side and it's full of milk. The entire tank is full and uh, milk, which has a density of 64.6 .6 pounds per feet cubed. And we want to find the force on one end. And we're given that the diameter is six, oops, not meters, it's six feet. So our, um, we're dealing in the uh, US measurements now. Um, so we get to see the difference in the formulas um, when it's not meters and dealing with mass. So the tank is full. We're looking at this and saying, okay, what's the pressure on one end? So since we're interested in one end, I'm just going to draw the circle that is the one end and look at that. And so here's my circle. It's uh, six meters or six feet diameter. And um, the force or the pressure that is on each level is so from the top of the tank to the bottom of the tank varies. So we have to deal with the fact that that pressure changes from the top of the tank to the bottom of the tank. And so where we are sitting, that determines what our pressure is. And so draw. I like to draw little arrows really demonstrating the fact that there's some variable pressure going on there. So I like to figure out the, the pressure first, and since we have a variable pressure, I'm going to look at an eight slice to help me figure this out. So if I get an eight slice, I don't know, I'm just going to pick some random spot here, um, and I have this little sliver rectangle, and it has this thickness of delta x, I'm going to try and figure out what the pressure is at that eighth slice, and that'll help me once I sum them all up, I could figure out the, the total um, the pressure that's uh, against that uh, that side. So for this eighth slice, I went a certain depth. So I'm going to say I'm going down x sub i star. So that's my certain depth I'm going down to get to that eighth slice. And my pressure formula is equal to rho times g times d, where rho is the density. In this case, it's 64.6 .6 pounds per feet cubed. Um, and then, oh, but our uh, rho times g, in this case, since we're dealing with, um, so that's not, that's not what rho is going to be, because remember, our weight is different than our mass. And so we actually get to say pressure is equal to delta times d. I know it's a little confusing, but we have delta, which is a little bit shaped different than your d, which is your depth. So delta is actually the density for your US measurement of uh, the milk. And so we don't have to bring gravity into play here um, when it's our in, in pounds. And so we have that delta is actually gonna be that 64.6 .6 pounds per feet cubed uh, times the depth. So our pressure will equal 64.6 .6 pounds per feet cubed times the depth, which is going to be x sub i star, and that's some kind of feet. And when we do our units here, we would get, just to kind of simplify the write up a bit, 64.6 .6 x sub i star, and this would be pounds per square foot. So that's what the pressure is. It's that many pounds per square foot. Now the area of that little rectangle, so the area of the eighth slice, this is where the area can get a little complicated. This is where you're gonna see in problems, you have to use similar triangles, you have to use Pythagorean theorem. Um, this is where you have to, sometimes the, the complexity of the problem comes into play. So if I'm looking at, let's zoom out a bit here, at my eighth slice there. The things I know, I know it has a diameter of six feet. That means the radius everywhere from that central point of the circle is three. No matter where I draw it, as long as I draw it from the center, that radius is going to be three feet. So the way I want to deal with that radius is I'm going to make a triangle out of it. So my radius, I'm going to draw a little triangle line from my center out to the edge of my slice, and that's going to be three feet. And then I can draw a little line straight down, that'll be 90 degrees up to my eighth slice from the center, a straight vertical, 
and then I have a little line just going across um, on my eight slice and I'm gonna call that horizontal line A and I'll call that uh, vertical line I drew B and I can't quite fit it in there but the relationship if we look at B what's the relationship well if we go from the center all the way out to the circle that's three feet because again that's just the radius and we also know that this top portion of that vertical line is our X depth that's how far we went to get to that eighth slice so if the whole thing is three and the little piece above is X then B would be three minus X sub I star and so we can use Pythagorean theorem here to now get a written in terms of X so if I use Pythagorean theorem I have a squared plus b squared equals, in this case, 3 squared, because that's what our hypotenuse is here. And then just doing this little scratch work on the side, I get, well, b was 3 minus x uh, sub i star. a squared plus 3 minus x sub i star squared equals 9. Move some stuff around. a squared equals 9 minus 3, the quantity 3 minus uh, x sub i star squared. And so a is the square root of 9 minus 3 minus x sub i star squared, all that quantity squared. But again, looking at my picture here, I need the entire width of that rectangle. I just found out half of it. And so I'm going to now call that 2a. I really care about 2a. So I'm going to write a little note to myself. 2a would be 2 times the square root of 9 minus the quantity 3 minus x sub i star squared. So the area of that little purple rectangle would be my uh, thickness of delta x and the width that I just found, the 2a. And so this would be delta x feet times 2 times the square root of 9 minus 3 minus x sub i star squared, and that's also in feet. So my area can be written all of that is the per square foot. So my force at that I slice is the pressure times the area. My pressure was 64.6 X sub I star. And I'm gonna write the units pounds per square foot times delta X times two square root of nine minus three minus X sub I star all of that squared and that's in square foot because of the delta x was foot as all also so notice the square foot cancels out and you get that your units for the force will just be in pounds and remember back in another section the units were in pounds when it came to the the US uh, units and um, so pounds is good that's what we want so if we do the Riemann sum, we have sum from I equals 1 to N of 64.6 X sub I star times delta X times 2 times the square root of 9 minus 3 minus X sub I star squared. And we can write this as an integral if we want to add up all of them and take the limit. And we get now the limits of integration are always kind of the issue here. So our depth, where, where do we care about going from? Well, the top of the tank to the bottom of the tank because the tank is full. So we go from zero down to six. And so my integral would be zero to six of 64.6x times two times the square root of nine minus 3 minus x squared dx. And then if we were to work this out, we'd get 5,479.57 pounds. So for our force against the side of that cylindrical tank is almost 6,000 pounds.